dad. We saw his baby uh, milling around yesterday in the stroller. Her first word is going to be summoner. <laughs> Second word is going to be war. Uh, the proudest moment. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Gianna. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, right. Name Gianna. Mm -hmm. Right. One thing I'm a little bit interested about is uh, potentially Barry, who also has an LD Nat 5, Yun Hong, to see if uh, what Archer is going to do against that, potentially pull something to counteract that, because we can kind of expect to potentially see that out, right? Yeah, he had a couple Nat 5s, uh, LD Nat 5s that he played in the first uh, matchup against Chaos. He had not only the Yun Hong, but he also had the... Lima. Lima. Oh, yeah. Lima, yeah. But I would say that Gianna kind of directly Lima. counters Lima. To an extent. She really, she, she can, yeah. It, it kind of depends which unit is like going first. You know, if Alana goes first and Gianna is as Gianna's maybe a little bit slower than his uh, Oracle, then, then, then that would, you know, definitely be put Barry at a disadvantage. But then it kind of depends, you know, if both of these players uni use a unit like Gami, you know, because these, these players both will rely on certain units the, the, that are part of their compositions, but there's a few units that they share. And so I think that's going to be a big part of this matchup is who gets to pick that unit first, and there it is. Speaking Gami, of Gami. the Archer, uh, first pick. So now Barian has to deal, the, the, both of these players have to deal with this kind of thing all the time where, you know, they go up against a player, they're familiar with it, they pick that unit first. So they've already, they've already ran the scenario through their head. Yeah, so we see the Ganymede first pick from Archer, and then Barian knows exactly what he's doing. He goes right into the Sierra pick to take that away from Archer because we saw in the last match that Archer had, having Sierra, having Gianna, and having Dover all in one fight, it was completely dominating, and it's really, really hard to, uh, to counter that. And so we have the Gianna pick, and then we have Hathor, and Molong, Okeanos coming back from Barian. Now, do you think it's interesting that uh, Archer knows he has Gianna and Baron doesn't, but he chooses to pick Gianna early We've to take up that slot? Too, with, yeah. uh, with, with the brain leg where he played the Sylvia pick so early. Right. And so it's kind of interesting. And then I might just kind of go beyond the scope of my comprehension on this, but I, I would actually expect to see those picks like the last, last right? You know, like either the last pick Because the they know they two. have it. Right, right, right. So we see Baron here strolling through a few of his phase, trying to find the correctly ruined one out of... All seven of them that he has, I believe. I seven believe things. he does have seven. He, he has, has a, a shrine of phase. Yes. Each player using up all their time, you know, really thinking about what they want to do. Right, and that's one of the things with this format is sometimes our units are in different places because they're playing on devices that aren't their own. So it's a little, sometimes a little bit trickier to maybe find on the order. It's like, oh gosh, where is this unit? Especially when you're a guy like Barian, when you've got seven phase to choose from. Um, it ends up choosing his forget right now. The players are both kind of uh, scoping out their units, running the permutations of all these units and all the scenarios based on what if they were to ban someone. Um, this right here can make or break the match. They're running down to four seconds, last moments. I'd assume that Barian's going to be able to take first turn either he way. He's got lead. the speed lead. Um, we know that Archer's uh, Gianna isn't the fastest thing. It got outsped by uh, Chaos is Busa last round, but now. Maybe he's maybe he wants him to outspeed him. He, he knows he's going to go second, and I think that's right. a big reason why he's bringing Raccoonies. He needs that passive to kick in. Uh, he knows that he's probably going to have uh, some sort of stun situation. I think that Raccoonie is going to be a big part of uh, winning this match if he ends up lasting long enough. So here we go. Archer against Varian in the first match of the round of eight. Couldn't see it, but it looks like Okiano did get the first turn. We can't. And there it is, Molong going so far. CR already getting bombed. In the promised time, Gianna. There's Gianna. Gianna. And that's what I'm talking about. He ends up taking out Gianna before she even gets to play or make a move. Varian wasn't kidding when he said No, he, he was like not her. kidding. <laughs> I believe Okianos did reset Ganymede's skills, but maybe not. So maybe he got resistance. Comes, comes straight through. Yeah. But as we know, you know, Feng Yan, never to be underestimated, exactly. definitely not, can take an entire team out. Until he's dead. Exactly. Yeah. Especially with having Rakuni there as well. That gives him so much survivability and uh, support. Are we going to see those violent pots again? Not, I, was again I was looking for Waiting it. For it didn't it. happen. Stun coming in on Feng Yan there. Lots of control on Varian's team as well, having Okeanos and Frigate. Resetting those skills and, and lowering those skill cooldowns on Barian's side. Like you said, the benefit of having Rakuni immediately goes for the bomb right on Rakuni. 
And it's very smart gameplay there too. He used uh, Ciara's second turn to do a little bit of damage to the Wind Fairy King. That way, Rakuni doesn't dispel the bomb off of himself. So that when, it, when you get into matches like this with these players, these guys have a vast understanding on just the simplest mechanics that you cannot forget in a match like this where every turn counts. Yeah, and even though Varian is moving relatively quickly, he's picking his turns extremely fast. He knows exactly what he's doing two steps ahead of when he actually does it. So it's very, st it's still extremely calculated, even though it might not look at, look like it. There's Ciara trying to stand tall here as we get into the second part of the match. Another bomb going into promised time. Barian choosing who's going to play. Oh, the resistant Raccoonie still gets the first attack, though, and uh, Wind Fairy King goes down. Wind Panda still stands, though. I don't think it's going to be enough, though, Archer. He has those two units that we talked about earlier, but with the bomb going down now on Raccoonie, if Raccoonie brings out, it's going to be a real tough for him to get back into the game. Especially with Yara and Kurgate and Lilianos both being able to stun the Wind Panda. A uh, reckless assault from Molong doesn't make it any easier. All of these units do really well up against Wind Panda. But he might be able to take out Sierra and, and Molong. Oh, Here's the violent proc. Goodness. The question is, can he kill the uh, the water panda? It, it, it kind of depends if he has the cooldowns up. He, he, he does it. it. He has Rolling Stone. He can get the stun, but does he choose to reset, reset. to prevent? He the does. Lands the reset. Yeah, he does. Is he gonna go to the defense break? Go gets the stun. Oh, so it might have been too little, too late right. from the thing. And out, it, it, it was a smart decision to save the second stun from Okiano, so that way he can play it now to lock in the win safely. It's still a very close match. Very well good. played from Archer. Yeah, you can see Barry in there laughing. It could have gone. He's saying it got a little bit nervous <laughs> there for a he second. He made him sweat for sure <laughs> toward the end. That's a tough thing to do. It's a tough thing to get a reaction like that out of Barry, and that just goes to show what it's like up there on the stage yeah, for these guys. Yeah. So it's really exciting to see all the energy in this room right now with these players in the final eight. As you guys were coming up through the ranks, and you remember facing opponents who might appear with their haste in their decisions to be reckless, but we're actually killing you on a regular basis, as Barian, I'm sure, has done to so many people. Psychologically, what was the impact of that? Because so many people are deliberate, they take their time, they're like, okay, this guy's a thinker, and, you know, Barian is just an all-out barrage, it's an assault. You never have a moment to relax as he continues to put the ball back in your court over and over and over again. Oh, yeah, it's super intimidating. Super intimidating, because you're thinking, okay, I'm going against one of the best players in the game, and now he's making his decisions. He knows exactly what he's doing. He must, I must be a cakewalk to him. Look right. at that. It, Look at that. It's it a swift like it. Ganymede. He did show his runes. That's why he didn't proc Vile. That's why. He didn't proc Vile, because he was swift. Watch him still proc Vile, though. Incredibly fast, Call though. the referee. <laughs> I'm curious to see if actually he changed that in between the matches from the first and the second one. It's possible. These players yeah. are allowed to change their runes in between matches. If they see certain uh, combinations within the players that they might be going up against, these, they, that is one of the rules that was clearly stated, uh, stated before this tournament yesterday, that they are allowed to change their runes around. Um, so they, they very well could. They could change their runes again after this match, before their uh, next match. In so the, to in the to my knowledge, no one did that in the first round. Probably not in the first match, but after their first match, before their second oh, match, oh, they could. Oh, first match you were not allowed to do any match. That I'm not sure. I think they actually were. If they were watching someone, because they were able to watch the stream, I think they were actually able to make adjustments. They were. Interesting, a Charlotte pick. As you guys know, after the most recent uh, the most recent buff, Charlotte is a little bit more viable now in RTA, along with the sister Rika. So we have some so. connection issues, but we're going to get right back into it as soon as we can. The fight's already on their way, and I think we got in just in time where we can catch the first turn of this round two. We did indeed, and is there any sort of adjustment that you guys saw out of Archer here that might be beneficial to him, countering uh, Barian's victory in the, in the first game? There it is, the, uh, the Swift Ganymede actually taking the first turn. You can see the disappointment and frustration in Barian's face as he uh, essentially loses that immunity for probably the rest of the game. Yes. Down goes I only got Hather, though. Sleep out of I was super surprised to see that he only slept Raccoon out of all of them. Of course, the Fire Monkey King can't be slept, but um, did miss it on both the Rusa and Okeanos. Kind of seeing a little change here, a little bit more control on uh, Archer's side, it seems, at the very beginning here. Yeah, Varian just needs to try and keep his Fire Monkey King alive as long as possible. That's going to be a lot of his damage. I think as soon as he loses uh, his Fire Monkey King, that's going to put Archer at, at a really advantageous position. Um, but without able to have Wusa immunity on his units, it's going to be tricky. Looks like it's a despair Gianna, though, because it he is, did get a stun is. off on that Wusa. 
Mid is earlier, Gianna actually stunned Okeanos with her first skill. Did not expect that. Very nice. Very nice. Reducing the attack bar of Rakuni there to potentially keep those bombs onto the Fire Monkey King and the um, Okeanos there. Okeanos could potentially throw that bomb right back to this Archer though. But one on turn the left. one turn, it's going to go immediately oh, to the stun. True. I yeah. thought that too, Rao. Another bomb miss. That's that was it. huge. He for needed that. Absolutely. Archer yeah. definitely needed that. But he still might be working on that Okeanos. You can see why Baryon dislikes Gianna so much. Yeah. And Archer's is built so well. It's extremely tanky and obviously Despair, which comes in handy every now and then. Okeanos with the resist on sleep. Sweet Dreams, not going to sleep today. Oh, here we go with Charlotte again. Here. Giannis did not want to go night night there, and, uh, and we have Charlotte coming back now with the full AoE. Did get the stun. This is a on tough decision because there's so Busa. many powerful skills that Archer's team has right now. So he it's tough to go for Barry to even choose who he wants to reset, and he chooses Chiana. Playing the attack bar boost onto Rakuni to have a passive healing kick in. Baryon just hanging on by a thread here. Just like the, the first round, go ahead and uh, focusing on Gianna, that mm. main target to get oh, rid of that Gianna right away. Down, and with this far into the match, with Wang's passive immunity going up, he's going to be hitting really hard, especially with the attack bar from the arena kicking in. Wang is going to hit really hard. Archer needed a stun there from Charlotte. Really did, did not get a single one again. And well, you're definitely not going to get a stun on Mehu Wang because he is immune to all stuns, and that's one of the strong things about him up against a team like this. No matter how hard Archer tries, he's not going to be able to stun that Fire Monkey King. Unless and of course, it's three Fire Monsters against a Wind Monster that's trying to stun them as well, so it may have glanced. No Bioproc now. <laughs> oh, man. Taken down the well, Charlotte it gets the violent proc break. from Mayo Wang. Like you said, the Mayo Wang is now gaining a lot of damage. Oh yeah, it does a lot. With that damage, the skill too, healing himself up, that's a lot of sustainability he's got on his side. Yeah, Mayo Wang scales tremendously in uh, later late game in RTA. The look on Archer's face kind of says it all here. Yeah, there's not much he's going to be able to do in this position. Um, the Fire Monkey King uh, is just in such a... It's not, not going to go down here anytime soon. He's just only going to be doing more damage the uh, longer this match goes on. So he's hoping to get the kill on Okeanos, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough for him to sustain long enough to be able to last through this match. He might be reconsidering his uh, his build of Swift onto Ganymede now, especially now that we know he won't be able to get any procs. It worked out. It did it work did out. Opportunity it did what yeah. it needed to do, but like you said, if he needed... If he would have let the Ganymede not be on Swift. He let the Wusa go, then he would have been able to use Critical Error from Gianna, remove the will, remove the immunity and the shield, and stun when he didn't have that chance. Well, instead, that Swift Gany unable to bring it home for Archer as he falls 2-0 to Baryon, the winner of the first in our four matches in the round of eight, and Varian has been looking really strong. Guys. Really strong. Oh, really strong. Yeah. Yeah. As expected, though, there's no real surprises there. Uh, like we said before, Varian's probably one of the favorites to win this entire thing. And we had a little bit of a scare in the first round against Chaos, but he is, uh, well, as, the, as, the, as the tournament goes on, he's learning more and more about the players. So I think that has a huge advantage for him because he's so analytical, like you said in his interview. Yeah, a little bit of an RNG nod that helped him escape uh, you know, early on in the first round against Chaos, and, you know, Brain Lag was certainly somebody who fell victim when we thought perhaps he would be in a similar situation. Right, well, Barry. these guys have done their homework. I mean, have you seen Baryon's spreadsheet? Have you seen it? Did, did oh, show my. I don't, my oh, hard drive's my. not big enough for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Baryon has a spreadsheet where he's done research on all these guys. He knows their unit stats, he knows their speeds, he breaks it down the same way he does his work. And so he, he showed up prepared, and you can see it in these matches. And that's the difference between the guys who kind of approach this at the highest of levels and the ones who are maybe lagging a touch behind, isn't it, Island? Yes, definitely. Um, it's good to see. I mean, it's very interesting to see Baron uh, go ahead and making it through this round right here. Um, I can only imagine more analyzation from Baron. I was very surprised he didn't bring out the uh, Yun Hong. I really wanted to uh, see him use it there, but I guess he analyzed it to the sense where he didn't need it.
yeah. this match. Yeah, kept yeah. it in the hip pocket as we send it down to Maria Ho, who is standing by with Barry and Maria. Barry and another well played match. You know, people say that you're very aggressive, that showed in your game. Do you think that that's just something you want to continue throughout, or are you going to maybe mix it up now? Um, I think the best strategy is always to mix it up. Never give your opponent um, a, a predictive way um, to counter you. So earlier in the second match, you looked slightly flustered at one moment. Do you feel like mentally it's really important to be able to regroup right away? Oh, yeah, very, uh, very important. Like last match, uh, the second one really, really hit me. But um, it's important sometimes just to step back and regroup even f for a split second. All right, well, congrats and uh, good luck in the semis. Thank you. Well, it doesn't seem like luck is something that Barian needs a whole lot of. He has been looking very good as we take a look at the remaining bracket. And up next...